For the past few seasons, I've barely touched the 1v1 playlist, but with the rise in popularity of competitive 1v1s, I thought I'd try to get back into the playstyle and talk about the kind of decisions that you need to make to become a solid 1v1 player. I queued these games super late at night and ran into Spuda, a high level player, and then later on also played a match against Forky in a private match to finish off the games. If you guys want more ones vids in the future of me pushing into the top 100, let me know. But now let's get into the games, hope you guys enjoy. We actually ran into Spuda, okay, interesting. I haven't played Spuda in 1v1 in a long time. Let's see how this goes. He actually rated pretty high too. Stay close to the ball here. Smack it top corner. Take the boost. There we go. Decent challenge. Might just be open here. It is. Nice. We got a little a floor pinch too. Getting back into ones, I'm gonna really focus on staying close to the ball. Staying annoying. Whenever I get back into ones a little bit, uh it's always really hard for me to get used to the play style. That might just be in his net. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but he uh, pinched it with me. But yeah, it's really weird to get into the play style. I tend to uh, give way too much space when I come back to ones. This should be a uh, mid boost grab here. Yeah, he doesn't get the immediate shot. Those, those immediate shots right there are really going to throw people off because Usually people take control, and uh, I didn't. I just shot it, so you can catch your opponents off sometimes. He's gonna grab that mid boost. I can't really stop him, so I'm just gonna grab the mid or the back corner boost. See if he gets flip. There we go. This should just be in. I take my time here, and there we go. Yeah, I really need to get back into ones. I need to start like really focusing on ranking up because I, <clears throat> I do like doing the ones content. It's definitely different than the rest of my videos. Uh, especially since it's very late right now and I'm my throat's pretty still pretty sore. I'm almost feeling better, but not 100% yet. There we go. And it's a finish again. Yeah, we're just getting open opportunities by pouncing at a time where he doesn't quite expect it. I was playing on uh I was playing ones on stream a day or so ago. And uh was not having the best of luck. I'm gonna fake this, he's gonna beat me to it, so I'm just gonna back off right away. And grab boost. That's totally fine. I can probably grab this boost from him. And then I'm going to start a setup here. Hopefully I can block him. Clo oh, I'm going to get stuck on the wall. I'll flick this up and then try to stay back. Just going to kind of scare him off a little bit. I'm going to fake the immediate challenge. Oh! Uh, man, flicked him to the ceiling. I'll just fake him here. Maybe shot to the far right? Yeah, nice. Well, honestly, uh, playing pretty clinical. Went for the fake here because he was going for the demo on me. <laughs> uh, this is a crazy attempt. I'm going to just fake this. He's in, if he wants to stay with this ball, he totally can. I might not be able to get back to this. Okay, we're good. He kind of missed his shot a little bit there, but I also didn't give him much time to work with. I uh, should be another demo goal here. I don't know why I said another demo goal. I, don't, I think it was the first demo goal we've had. <laughs> Man, this is going a lot better than I thought it would. I've talked about this in the past, but I get like really nervous playing ones. I think that's like common for a lot of people. What do we do here? Pancake. Okay, that didn't quite work, but kept control. Oh, I'm going to hit the post. Oh, turn. Oh, my fat car, please. Okay, I'll get the demo here and then maybe go for another setup. I'm gonna go to the ceiling. Uh, actually, never, I can't reach the ceiling. And there we go. Back left corner. It wasn't the cleanest, but I knew I could get like some sort of setup on a flip reset. I swear I'm not just like cherry picking the one game that I started doing w really well. I promise you, you can look at my Rocket League tracker if you want. I played this guy named Toji. He was, it was a uh, private. Private player when I was on stream. Like 1500. Nice shot. That was a really good flick. But yeah, so there's obviously my playstyle for ones is good when I'm on that ones playstyle, but it doesn't always come out. It was always really weird. I always never thought, I never thought of myself as a ones player. Even when I was like, you know, prime 1v1 gameplay. Oh, uh, like 12 Titans and stuff. 
Oh, this could be in my net. No, man. I didn't get back in time. Yeah, I never really thought of myself as a ones player. People always said, oh, you're such a ones player. But I, I never really thought of myself that way. So it's really interesting that people thought that. It's probably because I was a little more like just like focus on consistency. I just trolled. Oh my goodness. Okay, he trolled too though. <laughs> no, I trolled. Did he got this? Here he goes. This one, I'll, I won't defend it. He's got it. Oh, he's got. Oh, he. <laughs> I thought he was gonna go for the pinch. I said I wasn't gonna defend it, and then I tried defending it, and I just looked like a bigger fool. You know what happens. We might run into Spuda the rest of the night here. I, it's so late. So, oh, I can't get back. No. Nice. Keep it up. All you. Score it. Nice. Let's go. W from Spuda. Oh, he clapped our cheeks <laughs> together. What the heck was that? I want to watch that back. All right, good first game. Um, I will queue again, but like I said, it is quite late, so I don't know if we're gonna find anybody different. Um, I probably should be higher MMR than where I am right now, because I'm pretty sure top 100 is 15 something. 1531, so I'm currently uh, 96 MMR off of top 100. So that's quite a lot to climb, but if we get 10 to 11 points every game for winning, it's not too far. Oh no, we got Spuda again, okay, oh, well. I was queuing for like 15 minutes. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just too late. Um, I was talking to Spoon on his stream, actually. I completely lost my train of thought. I was talking to Spoon on his stream about maybe doing like a. I've done like a few nights where I like play Boomer with him. Uh,. I just kind of like ask if he wants to play Boomer and we kind of just like vibe out and hit the ball around and, and sometimes we get like some really crazy shots. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see that because like I'd love to hop in comps with him uh, for a video. Oh, he's a really chill guy. That's a bad shot. I'm going to give him the free ball here. And unfortunately I can't really stay with the ball because uh, I'm low. That forward. If we try to take the boost here I might be able to punish him a little bit. Uh, if I got a little more boost I could have went forward there. Let's see what happens here. That's a good shot. Nice one. Found a good space there off the corner. He's been doing a few fakes, so I, th I assumed he was maybe going to fake it again or like slow the, the flick. But he went a little bit. I'm just going to go around the corner here. He went a little bit faster at the time. Might be good. Yeah, it's a tough read. I'm getting these good kickoff positions. Usually I don't have the salt, most solid uh, kickoff. I've been trying to practice the uh, wave dash kickoff too. But I always bounce way too high. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I'm jumping too early. Big shot. And it's just top corner. Good save. Save again. I'm going to be low here. I'm going to have to uh, relinquish mid boost here. The second I, I see someone getting mid boost here, I'll be ready for a slingshot of some sort. Um, good fake for him off the floor there. I thought he was going to maybe wave dash it out. But he just hit it uh, by landing, so my timing of my challenge was a little bit off. So it was well played by him. He's going to back off this time, probably. And we can just shoot it again. Hopefully get a demo on him. Yeah, there we go. all of his boosts. Unfortunately, I hit it right. I, if he was on the other side, I would have been fine. Oh, I just totally trolled. <laughs> um, if he spawned on the other side, it would have been totally fine what I did there because I was shooting it top left. But because he spawned on the left side, he gets a free clear over the boost as well. So a little goofy uh, choice by me. He's in the mid boost here. It's a good kickoff possession. Let's see what he does. Above the ceiling. He has a flip. So I had to respect that. He grabbed mid and then backed off. There's still plenty of boost here. Get this around, take the boost. The second he pops it like that, I'm gonna go for it. He's not back yet. 
Okay, I, I was a bit troll. I definitely had had a free shot. Tough read. He misses. Okay, once again, just making him waste his boost. Take his boost. Pop it over him. And we get a goal. So, I mean, this has definitely been a, a much better game from Suda. He's been reading all of my shots and, and posturing. I'm just trying to pepper shots at him in a spot where he has to uh, flip and use a lot of boost. And uh, it's really, really important off the kickoff. Like when you have those little bits of boost like that, to use it very effectively on your landing. So the way that I had 12 there and was able to just boost slightly around the ball, I didn't even use all of it. What I was going to say is my Immortals progressive tower that I did with uh, Simple Shark and Swaggles, like that kind of stuff is really good for learning how to like the most minuscule of um, like boost matters. Oh, I trolled. Oops. I'm trolling. <laughs> Try to do like a weird setup. Okay, I'm, I'm actually just gonna go back all the way. Let's see what flick he does here. That's a good flick. It looked like it was maybe he's gonna set up like a 45 degree flick and then he just started doing the front flip. Which can throw me off. It can throw anybody off, really. Wall time flick. Alright, let's see what happens here. Yeah, those delayed shots. Um, I, I've seen that a lot, and I I think that like it can throw you off if you're not ready for like the positioning of his car. But he wasn't in a good spot to get the flip reset because he's already under like already on his underside. So if he ever rotates his car again, because people oh he might be under my net. Um, people if they have like air roll right or left, they can't do anything but like air roll the same way unless they use the other way. But it's so hard to do that. And like he's already underneath the ball, so he has to like air roll back and forward. I don't know if that makes any sense. The best way to get uh, flip resets is to uh, is to uh, ooh, big flick. The best way to get flip resets is to have that rotation into the into the ball. Ooh, that's gonna hit it into me. Good pop. Might be fast enough. He probably didn't expect me to shoot that right away. Yeah. He went for mid-boost there, and I don't think he can go for mid-boost if I have the space to shoot that. Nice flip. Wait for his touch here. The follow-up. Should be a uh, double here. Yeah, he... I find that... um. I'm finding really good opportunities to cut him off when he's let go of the ball a little bit like that. You gotta be really mindful of when players pop the ball forward off their car. That's a good, that's a good 50. That's a good challenge for him. I don't know if I can go get corner boost. Depends on how he touches this. Yeah, he's bringing it in really quickly. That was smart of him because I, I can't really go for corner boost there. Um, because if I do, we just, we, ooh, bottom left. No, <laughs> it's like in the net. Um, if I if I go for a corner there where he can chip it in, um, you can catch yourself going for a really bad play there by uh, going back corner and then they just bring it really quickly into the net. Now, obviously, that's going to be happening at higher levels only. I'm not really sure what level it'll stop happening at or start happening at, but either way, you gotta be really mindful that those opportunities are are available for players when they're in midfield like that. Like that. All right, so the cues were taking a long time, and uh, I was only running into Spuda, so I invited Forky to do some private ones. So we're gonna see how this goes. Forky's a very solid ones player; he's very mechanical. Big flick is gonna save that. Now I have some space in the corner here. I'm just gonna stay close. Challenge. Challenge again. Take the boost. I'm just trying to cause a starve here. Good save. He's playing very smart on the on the defense. He's got an offense here. Good save for me. Big flick. He's gonna save it again, but once again, I'm under. I have him under pressure. I might be in. Hopefully the back roll. Off the post. Oh, he hit the post! 
Okay, we got very lucky. He had he had uh, good pressure there, and the shot could have been on target both times. <laughs> so I really should have been scored on. I think he was scared of me reaching it because the way that I recovered in net. So he tried to go as far uh, right as possible for him from his POV. Okay, I'm gonna go for a musty here. Is she gonna fake it? Cause he might have pounced. I had to I had to change my my approach. Honestly. Like, Forky's so consistent with flip resets that it's probably wise if I just assume he has it. Like, better players, when they have the ability to uh, flip reset all the time, it's actually easier to assume that they're just going to have the flip reset and play that instead. Because they'll probably have it again here. What did I say? <laughs> he's got here it's a fast flick he's always gonna save these and I don't really mind that there we go yeah I just gotta fake him like he's playing like really good defense and I have to like make sure I play these like slow plays and keep the ball off of him all right that's a good kickoff from him it's off, I think. Yeah. He's trying to like bait me in. I don't really want to. I don't really want to put myself in a spot where I can. Okay, we good. I, I was going to say, I don't really want to put myself in it where I'm going to be overcommitted, but here I am almost overcommitting. All right, we made that. We, we actually made a good save and then followed up. I actually feel like my old self a little bit. Alright, so we got the good kickoff in possession. Well, that's a good touch for him, but should still be possession for me. Oh, he's still going. Oh, gosh. I'm going to fake the shot and try to stay close here. That's smart. That's a good touch, too, because he can probably boom it. Yeah. Just trying to stay close and be annoying. I do have to let go of the possession now, though, or, like, aggression. Holy flick. Man's headed to the moon. He's got a flip reset here. He still has it. I find that like for the most part, as long as I don't bait myself in, I'm doing okay. And some players like they'll they'll they're a lot of their playstyle, which I wouldn't say like normally for Forkies is this. But um like some players playstyles is literally just to uh uh bait you in for like a bad defensive clear or something. I'm gonna fake this. Always oh, a little tough to land on. He does get it though. I have to be like stay here, be annoying. And now I get mid boost. He's gonna get a flip reset every time. This man like always has one. <gasps> what did I say? This man is crazy. His mechanics are like. It's, cra it's crazy because like his mechanics are nearly unmatched in the game, I would say. Oh, I s almost got the save. His mechanics are nearly unmatched, but his decision making has always been like his weak spot. Not necessarily on offense, but more so on defense. I talked to him a little bit about, th about this, like how, like if he, if he worked on his uh, offense a little bit or defense, he would be insane. He already is like insane, obviously, compared to most players, but that is his like one weak point that I would say like differentiates him from pro players. Cause he has like really good options on, on offense because of his mechanics. Um but his defensive like options are are sometimes a little bit questionable just because he's so mechanically gifted that he can put himself in like really awkward positions. Um that aren't as punishing for him as they might be for other players. I don't know. Why did I jump for that? Um, but that can be really confusing in like a three setting and stuff. That's a really good pop. We've got to shoot this. Yeah, great finish. I haven't seen that black hole goal explosion in a long time, but I think he's been using, I think he's used this for forever actually. He's trying to do the delay kickoff. This is my one last defensive blunder here. 
Nice. Really well played. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, how I'm starting to play in ones again. It's like, like I said, it's like a really weird play style that I have to like get back into. Really good mindset about like keeping pressure, keeping on the ball, keeping possession. Forky's obviously really solid and a much better ones player than I am. Definitely go follow him on Twitch if you haven't seen him already. Same with Suda, go follow him on Twitch. I'll have the links in the description. Um, if you guys want to see more ones in the in the future, let me know. I know I try to uh, avoid it for the most part nowadays, but I do want to try and get into it. I know that ones is huge right now with uh, Gamers Eight and also like the uh, Creator Cup or not the uh, not the Creator Cup, the uh, Chalked Cup, uh, Cup, whatever it's called. I can't remember what Rizzo called it. All I know is that I think uh, Moxie versus Rawas in the finals or something. It was crazy. I didn't get to watch the full thing yet, but either way, I hope you guys enjoy. Until next time, have a great day. And I'll catch you in the next one.